Madam Speaker, the Honourable Prime Minister, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition and Honourable Members, I rise in support of the 2018-2019 budget, in particular the activities to be undertaken under the budget allocated to the Ministry of Environment. Madam Speaker, I'm sure everyone in this House will agree that there is an increasing global interest and recognition of Fiji's economic growth. What is also true is that the development pathway is increasingly being driven by a global shift towards sustainable green and blue economies. Madam Speaker, contrary to Honourable Dulaki Virata's belief, this government will continue to establish strong and sustainable resilience for every Fijian. The Sustainable Development Goals have been and will continue to set our key objectives that will help us achieve the resilience that we seek. This budget reflects the government's unwavering commitment to an indelible, transformative development that is economically, socially and environmentally sustainable. As this government strives to build a strong climate resilient economy, it is of paramount importance that we continue to build on a foundation that accords a well protected, healthy and valuable environment. This, Madam Speaker, will no doubt afford us with a strong, prosperous and inclusive growth for all Fijians. This budget, Madam Speaker, lays out the trajectory to bolstering scientific, technological and innovative programs. These programs cannot be run on their own entirely and will be catalyzed through st strategic partnerships with international agencies and the private sector. This will be led by a strong government backed with policy and a tenacious regulatory system. Madam Speaker, the Ministry of Environment is responsible for protecting and conserving Fiji's natural environment, which includes air, land, water, all layers of the atmosphere, all organic and inorganic matter or living organisms, and the interacting natural or human systems that encompass all of this. The Ministry will continue to raise awareness and educate all Fijians towards the need to protect and conserve our environment and its natural assets. The Ministry will focus on showcasing the all-important role that our natural assets play in slowing down the disastrous impacts of climate change. The Ministry will also instill the need to keep poisonous materials like plastic out of our environment. This way, our natural assets, like our corals, our mangroves, seagrass, and the precious marine and freshwater life, and our much threatened native tree species, are not only protected, but also guided through a pathway to flourish. While we educate and raise awareness, we will also ensure compliance is maintained. Madam Speaker, awareness in education demands responsibility. The Ministry will carry out its mandate through the strict enforcement of the Environment Management Act and other associated regulations, like the Environment Management EIA regulations, the Environment Management Waste Disposal and Recycling Re Regulations, the Ozone Depleting Substances Regulations, the Endangered and Protected Species Act, and the Litter Act. The Ministry has also maximised the effectiveness of monitoring, compliance and reporting by forming partnerships with other ministries and government agencies and providing training for their teams based across Fiji to monitor and report breaches against environment management laws. The Ministry is also entering into the drone surveillance era through the effective deployment of drones to monitor and report environmentally illegal activities. Madam Speaker, the Ministry will also be responsible for fulfilling Fiji's obligation under regional and international environment-related treaties, conventions and protocols that Fiji is a party to. These include the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity, the Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing, the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety, also the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species, the Convention on Migratory Species, the Vienna Convention on the Protection of the Ozone Layer, and the Montreal Protection on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer, the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants, and the Waigani Convention. Madam Speaker, the Ministry will take a pragmatic approach for the fiscal year 2018-2019. Firstly, the Ministry will ensure that there is continuity in the good work carried out over the past year. 
the Ministry will facilitate and support a strong community outreach model involving all citizenry groups, including businesses, on the environment protection agenda and regulatory obligations. This is important in every sphere of our nation's existence and future. We believe that this approach will play a crucial role, creating greater green investment, more jobs, and increase Fiji's competitiveness in the global arena. Secondly, as mentioned earlier, the Ministry will continue to build and enhance a coherent, effective and robust regulatory and compliance system. Madam Speaker, this approach will support outreach and awareness while ensuring strong monitoring and reporting systems. To realise the benefits of environment protection, it is imperative that a strong-willed approach is taken towards compliance, both within the environment and within our conservation areas. This approach has so far led us on a path of strategic justice to our environment. Madam Speaker, I take this opportunity to thank this House and all other citizens who have shown an increased awareness and interest in our environment, especially those who have stopped bad habits and become environmentally friendly, and those who have reported illegal activities being undertaken around our country. This support is invaluable and very much appreciated. Thirdly, Madam Speaker, to avail the best possible outcomes, the Ministry will continue to deploy a relationship management dimension. The Ministry will build on the successes around the recent NGO CSO roundtables, and this will be extended to the business segments in Fiji as well. This will help cement a well-planned, coordinated strategy to share and support the Ministry in its policy and action. The Ministry will also strengthen the existing 3R programs, reduce, recycle and reuse, and this will establish a stronger waste management and pollution control strategy for Fiji. Speaking of waste management, Madam Speaker, Stage 2, Cell 3 of the Nambora landfill is expected to be completed in about nine months at a cost of $3.3 million. The Ministry will work closely with the Ministry of Local Government and the Rural Authority to ensure that waste is managed appropriately within their jurisdictions. Madam Speaker, in response to comments made by the Honourable Aseri Randrondra this morning regarding garbage collection sites, I am pleased to advise that $1 million has been allocated to the standardisation of skip bins countrywide. This Honourable Dulaki Ferrata will greatly enhance and streamline collection services at the same time making the process more economically viable and efficient. Another initiative that will be piloted in the Nasinu area is the distribution of compost bins. Training on best use practices and benefits of composting will also be carried out with the aim to encourage more of our citizens to participate and ultimately create backyard organic and healthy farming for generations to come. This practice will also reduce the amount of garbage that would generally end up in our landfill, which in turn increases the lifespan of the landfill in the long run. Our ministry will also keep up the momentum and action to address plastic pollution. In response to the existing situation, our government will explore and establish reduction of plastic bags and straws and control the use of single-use plastic bottles. The Ministry recently launched a pledge of no straw use with school children throughout schools in Fiji. The current 10 cent levy on single-use plastic bags will increase to 20 cents. And I'd like to stress, Madam Speaker, that the aim of this levy is to discourage the use of plastic bags and encourage our citizens to use reusable bags instead of plastic bags. The next logical step will be to ban these single-use plastic bags and straws altogether, and that will come in the not-too-distant future. The Ministry will continue to carry out outreach programs that will establish conservation throughout Fiji. This will include the implementation of the National Biodiversity Action Plan. The Ministry has embarked on an exercise to extract a quantified and tangible picture linking conservation and climate resilience. For example, Madam Speaker, quantifying the amount of mangroves, sea meadows and an indicative area on corals within our coastal zones. This will greatly assist in understanding climate change adaptation for our coastal cities, towns and communities, including Fiji's mitigation potential. The very fact that we are quantifying our national environmental assets will also speak volumes into the proposed financial modelling 
like insurance against natural catastrophes. To explain this in simpler terms, Madam Speaker, it is a well-known fact that wetland systems like corals and mangroves reduce the impact from strong wave action associated with cyclones. When calculating an insurance premium, these ecosystem service assets can be factored in as well. Madam Speaker, to ensure all of this, including the provision of fast, efficient and reliable services to the public, the Ministry has reviewed its systems, standard operating procedures and team structure. These systems will be applied in the coming year and will ensure improved service delivery with highly capable personnel within their areas of expertise that are required to carry out the Ministry's mandate for this fiscal year. Madam Speaker, this budget is a well thought out, well planned, inclusive and responsible budget that, that covers a broad spectrum in a truly sustainable fashion. One point I would like to highlight, Madam Speaker, and something that our Prime Minister and our Minister for Economy have stressed time and time again, is the fact that our borrowings are never used for operational needs, but rather for much needed infrastructure that unfortunately was horrendously neglected by past leadership. Like in any business, Madam Speaker, a continued maintenance and progression program is key, but sadly, this was not the case in the past. Our government, Madam Speaker, has corrected that. In closing, I would like to commend our Prime Minister and our Minister for Economy and his team for their leadership and forward thinking, which will take Fiji into a stable and sustainable future for us all. Thank you, Madam Speaker.